A few months ago, I wrote this blog. Uh, I looked into seeing how I could improve my standing on my fan page on Facebook, hopefully to bring in some extra revenue and uh, clientele. Um, since then, I got quite a lot of response from this blog. Um, and you may have noticed uh, this thing happening into your web pages coming soon, the new Facebook pages, which is problematic because when I did the designs in the first place, if you look at the actual image here, it was based on the new design setup where you have tabs down the side here and you have these pictures across the top and I made the change from this look to this look and basically got 300 new fans because of it due to some other little techniques I employed okay now what I want to do is to show you how to do this uh, I'll go through some of the aspects of what I've listed in this uh, tutorial as well to show you how you can improve your Facebook page and we'll do it over uh, some little excerpts. I'll do it in paused sessions and show you how to do it completely. Okay, this is just a little introduction so we'll get started now. Okay, first things first, I'll just show you the changes uh, that's happening because what you can do is you can preview it. And this is one of my uh, fan pages by the way. Uh, I need to update it. So I'm thinking of just using this as an example. As you can see it's the old style. You've got a profile picture, you've got some images at the top. Uh, they don't seem to have any kind of overall view and uh, essence and feeling of what your work or business or whatever is trying to portray. So what we need to do is improve it a little bit. I'm going to improve this section as well but and this section, but I'll have to show you how to do that inside the new uh, fan page, which basically is just going to have the timeline. Uh, so when you preview, you'll notice this appears. <coughs> and everything changes. You got the timeline here. You basically uh, it's got this, but this will disappear as soon as you publish it. It's got this area for the cover picture, which doesn't actually appear until you've made one. And it's got your profile picture, which is square now. You can't have it any size you want. It's got all the information here and your tabs here. Okay. Now you'll notice with your tabs, uh, you can design these, add the extra ones, move them around, whatever. Okay, and I'll show you how to do that as well. Okay, and what I will hopefully will do is I'll show you how to possibly improve this number. So it's instead of 26, it's going to be a little bit better. Okay, first things you'll notice as a difference is there's this button here which says admin panel, which opens up and it gives you some information about any new notifications, new likes, your insights and tips. Uh, strange, those tips are there's only two. Actually, there's only one on mine. <laughs> anyway, in the messages, but you also got your control uh, aspects here. Okay, so you can use it as uh, fresco wall art, which is important, and I'll tell you why later. Okay, you can build your audience by inviting people, etc. Whatever. So I'll show you that later. What I want to do first, obviously, is to design this area and the tabs that I'm going to use. I use short stack. It's quite a nice place and you can design tabs which then appear. I'll show you one from my other web page. Uh, Rob Snow. There you go. The rest of the screen's blurred out because I don't want you to see what's happening. Okay, this is my new designed version for this page. And one thing I've noticed is that there's certain cut-off areas. You notice that the picture is half and half here. And there's this natural grown line you can see is invisible. Uh, but it's the, a present and you can use that as a design aspect. Okay, and there's a so large area here. You probably know if you've got a profile that's got the new timeline uh, that you can put information and design in. Okay, and also you'll notice as you go down you know you got the different aspects okay but if you look here these are all the tabs that I've put in uh, and I'll show you how to do that and I'll show you how to rearrange them so you can put them in the order that you want instead of how they default okay so that's how I'm going to do it uh, so when we come back I'm going to be inside Photoshop okay
Now this is Photoshop. I've already made a document uh, the same size as the actual landing area on the main page for the uh, profile picture or the the timeline picture at the top, the big area. Okay, and the actual size of this is 851 wide and 375 tall, but beware that that means it's including the actual area here because I want to try to show you how you can use this area. The grey area is the actual size that you're going to have to use for the actual design of the picture which is, let me just make a new document OK, paste it, that's the grey area and the image size for that is uh, 851 as I said and 315 tall OK so that's what you have to be aware of when you're looking for an image or creating an image for this area. Okay, I've also also added some guides which might help me later on. Okay, that's the guide covering the area above. This is useful when you're actually cropping images. Uh, you don't crop images inside uh, the top area in the the actual photo on the timeline, but for instance you could make a slice for the grey area and just export that out and keep the white area. Now. I want to get started, okay. So most of this may be done in time lapse to show you how uh, to do it quickly, so I can then jump back in and show you the uh, results. But quickly, I want to show you that I've found a picture uh, that I, I took a picture of me actually doing one of my uh, wall paintings. I thought that might be appropriate for the actual um, top image. The thing is though, it's just a photograph and what I've done actually is I've resized it and actually cropped it to fit the area. Even so, you'll notice it's still uh, just looking like a photograph. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to select it and bring it in. Okay, which is... just not worry about that again. Okay, I've pasted it into my area. You'll notice, and this is one reason I'm keeping the black areas, you may find that you have a photograph which gets some important information here and it gets cut off because you've got that uh, profile image box so keep that there just so you can judge what's going to be behind and try to avoid not having something important there now what I'm going to do now is uh, show you how to manipulate this a little bit so we can actually make it look a little bit more interesting first of all I'm just going to make a mask for it uh, so I don't have to delete the bit I don't want to see but that's all that's going to show basically okay as I said it just looks, just looks like a photograph so what I'll do is I'll make it look a little bit more interesting for you so you can understand how to probably improve this several things we can do first one I'm going to do is to make a gradient uh, from the top to the bottom like so and then put it on to multiply now what that does is it darkens it at the top and it brings it into an area. Now you notice it's a bit too fake and light there because it's a, a middle grey I'm using and not black. So I'm going to change that back to black. Okay, and do that again. Like so. Yeah, and you'll notice it's got a big issue now because it's uh, not got enough space and it's because uh, it's on multiply the black just literally gets burnt out. Okay, so we've just got to play with this a little bit. Bring it into a, a dark grey but not a full black. Okay, like so. And you notice you've got an effect where it gets darker. You may not want to have it so <coughs> so dark. You may want to see some of the imagery there, but you may also want to put some text there. Okay, unfortunately I've got a head so you can't have the text there. It'll have to go here. But I'm going to keep it like that for the time being. Next thing I want to do as well is to apply a blur so it blurs into this part of the picture and not have the kind of the interest there. Now the way we can do this as well is if I duplicate this layer, okay, like so. Get rid of that there because I just made it by mistake. Now if I apply uh, a Gaussian blur to this, like so notice everything goes blurred yeah like so and what we've got to do then is to create a ramp okay so it goes out of focus there okay and the way we do this is to do that uh, masking effect again you notice we've got the mask here 
Okay, what we've got to do is do the gradient black and white across from here, remembering that black is uh, transparent, so we want to show this, so it's got to be black to white there. Okay, so let's just click on, click on this quickly, so it's gone back to the normal black and white. So I'm just going to add the gradient across, just to see what the first effect is. What you'll notice is that it goes from clear through to a fuzzy kind of uh, transparent thing, because what it's doing, literally, is it's actually making the, the Gaussian blur disappear. Now you may want to have this solid black, okay? So what we've got to do is to make the white more shorter, so it actually goes blur to uh, in focus quicker. Okay, so I'm just going to make it so it goes from there to say there, see what that effect is. And there you go, you see you've got a nice effect here, it's all out of focus comes into focus so you can see some interest on the right hand side okay now you'll notice it's brought that back so literally what we've got to do there is just on your mask layer just paint that black fill it with foreground color like so and it's disappeared again so there's a starting point what I'm going to do is just uh, play around a little bit and show you how to develop some other aspects of it to bring in the the lettering and the uh, design for the logo here, etc, etc. OK, and I'll be back. You'll see it, but it's in time lapse, so I won't be able to talk. OK, so I'll be back in a bit. OK, I'm just going to jump in here to tell you that uh, one of the things I wanted to do is to add... I had the idea of having some brushes coming out of here as a part of the design to show that I actually use brushes. You can see me using a brush there. And have it so that I have this as a kind of a flooring area and then the brushes emerge outside. So what I did is I just had a quick search on uh, Dreams Time, which is where I have an account, uh, stock images. I was looking for brushes as you can see. I found two that I might be able to use. This is useful because it's got a white background and I can obviously cut it out quite easily. And the same with this one. This one looks a little bit more used. Okay, so I'm, what I'm going to do is because they're relatively cheap and I only want the extra small size, uh, I'm going to buy both of these. Okay, so I'm going to just add that to my cart and add this to my cart. OK, for the last part, I'll just talk my way through the design part. I've done several little things, put some text in. This is actually the same text that I use for my logo, uh, you'll see here. OK, as I don't have a logo specifically for this uh, wall art, it's just something I do uh, part time. Um, I'm going to use the main logo I have on my other web page and uh, basically take it from there. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just show you literally how to grab that and bring it over. Uh, I'm just going to take this out of the way so we can see both windows. Oops, that's going to pop back in so you've got to be very careful. Uh, drag it over here. I only want to see this black area here. Alright, so what I need to do is then just make sure we have this. Just worry about that. Bring it over, make sure it fits into the black square area. And put it above there. Just make it a little bit smaller. Like so I want to put some colour behind as well, but we'll do that later. Just make sure it's the right size. Press enter. Now to make this look a bit a little bit more clever, I'm gonna drag this one over as well. Like so put it down here and because it's like a sister company as such. I'm just going to reduce the size of it and just stick it in the corner like 
use your arrow keys is probably better. Just trying to snap to everything. Like so. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is just add some extra colour in the background just to make it look a little bit more pleasant. I don't like black, so I'm going to put a bluey grey like so. That fill foreground. There you go, it's got the shadowing from the uh, uh, icon anyway. Okay, so th this is roughly what I want to do for the landing page, the first page you see. Just extend this out. What I'll do is I'll uh, have a quick pause and I'll show you how then to crop all that and put it into your uh, your actual page. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to basically just clean this up and put it into your page and then we can move on to the short stack stuff later. Basically I've got the logo all sorted out. If I just copy paste and make a new... Yep, you'll see it's there. Okay, just need to refine the crop so it fits exactly to that square. Oops, I did one earlier and it's got the options in there which we don't need. Okay, so that goes to there. That's exactly the right size. Oops. I can cut that in a minute. Don't worry, it's just one pixel out, so I just got to change the canvas size by. Hmm, so that it's actually the right size. So, okay, that, and then I'm just going to get that colour. And just drop the bucket in so it's. Oops. Let's just do the whole background that colour then. Uh, Okay, so that's your image for your logo. Uh, I'll just save that out. Fresh. Uh, go logo. Let's call it that. I've got a little page bu book for. I'm going to say it's a PNG. It seems to have better quality, even though Facebook recompresses everything anyway. Okay. Just close that down and go back to here. Now what we've got to do is just close that so we can see this. Don't worry about this bit here because it's going to get covered up by the icon. So I'm just going to crop that to the shape that I mentioned before. And then save that as... Uh, you can do it from web if you want to. PNG, right. Let's call it from yeah, here, just call it that doesn't matter. Okay. I saved this earlier, I don't want to Select everything, so I've got to bring everything back. Okay, just save it quickly. Right, that's that finished. So I'm going to go to let's just hide Photoshop. Go back to uh, no, I want to go back to ah, fresh go wall art. That's it. Okay. Now what we've got to do here is add a cover art. Okay. Upload a picture. If you remember, luckily I've got this thing, I can jump straight to the folder. That's the uh, logo and that's the PNG for Fresco, so choose it. Basically uploads, takes a few seconds. Ask you to reposition it, but I've actually made it the correct size, so that doesn't matter. And just press OK. Right, 
Right, so now you notice what I've got to do quickly is just change this because uh, we want to add a new one. So upload photo. Fresh go logo. Oops, where is it? It's back up here. Fresh go logo. Choose that. That will just whiz for long for a second, and it will pop that in. Basically, what we have now is the logo in place uh, and the background cover image, or whatever it's called. Okay. So I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna change everything else. Uh, do the short stack. Show you how to do that. Okay. That's it for today. Okay, so this is where we left it from last time. As I said, we've got a cover image now and an icon. What we ha don't have is these uh, nice little tabs that you can have down here that be can be set up and have welcome pages, galleries, uh, feeds from blogs, etc. etc. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. And the way we do it is before we start doing anything, is to design it. And I just I didn't want to waste time, so I've designed one in Photoshop already. That's my uh, landing page items that I'm going to be using. And you'll see one requirement is that it has to be 8, 10 pixels wide. It doesn't matter how long it is, but it has to be 800 pixels wide. Okay. Uh, as you can see, I've also set it up in group sections. Uh, there's a header area, uh, a central area where we can put information and data and also a footer area. Okay, and I'm just going to basically show you how to put all that together quickly in one tab and then obviously you can then figure out how to work the rest of the tabs in uh, short stack yourself. So one thing I need to do first is because I've made these slices I can go to save for the web. Like so. So I'm using these in PNG format and as you can see I have to select all the slices, save and I'm going to call this uh, fresh time and just uh, unfortunately for some reason it automatically puts JPEG on even though I've just selected PNG and s selected slices, ok, press save so that's done. We'll just go to here. I'll just go to um, short stacks. You have to obviously register. I've already registered. I've got my account open. And you'll notice here it's got create blank tabs. Okay. So click that and just say welcome to the wall. Because <laughs> it's about, about wall painting. Okay. Create blank tab. Opens up the actual tab widget editor like so and you notice it says your tab is actually empty at the moment what you've got to do first because we're using this timeline mode now is to click this button I've just installed this like so and the first thing we need to do is add the header section which is just a picture now saying that it's a welcome page so we've got to do it in two different modes the first one is when you're a fan already a fan and the other one's when you're not a fan so what I'm going to do is show you both ways. Okay. Now these are some pictures I've got from my other sites. So I've got to choose a picture from my Facebook. Where is it? Fresh, wasn't it? Fresh time. There you go. There's my top part. Choose that. Uploading. As soon as it's uploaded, it'll add the selected URL there. Get a URL, there it goes, there, and use selected URL. Okay. you notice it's got this here. Now what you can do, and I'll show you at this point, is to add a URL as an image map. So if you wanted to go to your main site as well, you can do. The way you do that is you go to Advanced, here it says, or click image to create hotspots. These are image maps, basically. Click that, and then just click your screen somewhere, and this appears. And all you need to do, literally, is just drag that around the shape of your area that you want to be able to be clickable. Press that, and then just literally go... You have to put the HTTP part. 
I'm just going to put my own website and then it says open a new window. That's f um, important if you don't want to lose the Facebook page whilst people are searching. Do that, click yes, save. What you'll ha see happen is that that's your starting point of your um, page design. Okay, and you'll notice here though it's got several different little options because this is just for fans. You want to make sure it's only that clicked instead of that one. Okay, now if you're a fan, you'll see that. If you're not a fan, basically everything will uh, not appear in, in that sense. Okay, and also you'll notice it's got this. It says image. Uh, so what we've got to do there is to make sure you have it says no titled borders, which means everything disappears. And make sure you save it. Okay, that means that will always stay like that for anything you put there now. Second one, we need to put in for the fans. So you click that button, and you then add a background image instead of just an image, which will be the same picture, obviously, unless you want to choose a different one for the uh, fans and non-fans. Okay, so I'm going to do the hotspot again. Unfortunately, it doesn't save that information. You have to do it every time. Like so HTTP dot org save. Okay, but this one is different. It's got actually uh, a background image, and what we want to do is to add the options to also show the likes or the people who are liking it. And what we can do there is, if you go to box count, for instance. Okay, I think that's all I need to do. Just change the scheme to whichever version you want. Okay, in default font, I'm going to have it as Arial. Okay, save that. What that does is it just pops in that box that you see on lots of pages that say uh, like or not like. Yeah, there you go. All right, and it gives you a number of how many people are actually liking it. There's another thing about. Uh, using this area when you're designing as well is to make sure that this fits inside because it may look a little bit horrible. Okay, the next thing you may want to add some text underneath this to say welcome, thank you, joining, blah blah. And then th what you do here is you use this tool. Okay, add that. Again, add a background image. Accordingly, if you remember I did the one for the middle section, which is this one. Wait for it to upload. Okay, so you selected. Now that's going to patch into where the text should be. And I'm just going to put some casual text here because uh, I can show you later how to style it, this, which is another next stage. This is where you add your text to say welcome. Now you may want to do one for uh, fans and one for not fans. Okay, so I can show you quickly that that's possible as well. When you make widgets as well you'll notice they always appear on top so what you have to do is drag that down below the two top images like so. And another thing you'll notice straight away is that the text is here and you don't want to go in there, you want it in this area which is the thing I was going to tell you about the CSS which I'll show you in the next stage, but I'm just literally showing you how to set up a tab at the moment. Now the next one we've got to do is the footer, which is just an image tab again. Select background image, choose the file, choose, wait for it to upload, Select. Okay, now you'll notice it's got lots of these. I won't do all of them, I'll just press one as a kind of a test. Okay, show you how to do it. But basically, you just create another hotspot again. And say, for instance, you've got a Facebook page and you want to link that bit to it, you can just uh, make the shape around that, like so. And as before, you just put in your HTTP 
and then just put Facebook dot com stroke Rob P Snow for instance. Yeah, I don't think that's my proper one, but I'll change it later. Okay, open a new window, save. Okay, there you go, and you can do that for all those. Okay, so it's going to press OK and save again, and I'll just show you how to put that into your. Oh, you notice at the bottom. Just quickly, quickly move that to the bottom. If you did want to do text for fans and. Uh, non-fans separately, you notice here where it says rich text it does say clone this okay so you don't have to go through the whole process again you can literally just uh, have two versions of the same thing, you notice it's called rich text 1, rich text 2 and obviously you can then just click that one for non-fans and that one for fans and this is, oh, that's got to be for non-fans and this one's for everybody because it's just the footer image okay now that's all set up and it may look a bit confusing on here because this is the admin view because it's got everything showing but I'll just quickly show you how it will look if you are for instance a fan you click there and it will just reconfigure everything so you can see what it's going to look like when you're just a fan okay and that's basically it you see nice little tab so I'm going to do now is just to show you where you actually install it Okay, over here after you've finished all that, you can got a little install tab. Click it. And because I've not got the uh, paid account, I've got the free account, it says here choose quick publish. What it does then is it gives you a list of all your pages that you have. And you should notice there you go. Welcome to Wall Art. Okay, you can install it on that one. And you just literally need to do there is just call it uh, welcome to the wall like you did okay press return okay and what you know now is that it's actually been installed uh, so I'm going to just show you what it looks like on the page if I go here now I okay, guess fresco wall art you don't even have to click it does say click view publish tab if I've got it already open I just press re, uh, re uh, load and it should include that tab my internet seems to be slow today for some reason okay and there it is welcome to the wall okay you'll notice it's got the default icon for um, homemade tabs I'm going to show you how to change that in the next uh, um, part of the movie but for now that's basically how you set up a tab okay you just build up <coughs> the sections as you want them but if you look down here, these are all the little widget things you can add to your uh, to your uh, tab, and you just have to explore them and uh, see how you can actually integrate them properly. But you can actually have Twitter feeds, YouTube videos, I mean YouTube videos, Mailchimp newsletter campaigns, etc. Everything really, like buttons, and you can also add code at the bottom. So, for instance, if you want to do tracking or just put some JavaScript in or something you can do there okay we can talk about those in a later movie probably okay, I'm just going to publish these changes and that will be it for this section the next section I'll talk about how to do some CSS changes to make for instance this work better okay so this part now what I'm going to do is to show you how to uh, add an icon there and also if we go to the tab, if I just click on it just don't let me click on it for some reason, no, there you go it will load up, it takes a while because it's actually taking the data from the short stack uh, database okay as you can see when I come in because I'm an administrator here it will show you the same view that I see in short stack uh, but you'll notice it's got the text in the wrong place so what I'm going to do is just show you quickly as a fan so what I'm, what I'm, whilst it's reloading I'm just going to tell you the, uh, the whole point of what I'm going to show you here is to know how to manipulate uh, the CSS because you may design something like I've done and the way they've added the uh, ability to add certain features like text and things it goes over the top of your design you don't want that you want the text here and you may want to add some other CSS uh, 
bits to it. The problem is you have to understand CSS coding to be able to make this work, uh, which is a problem if you don't. But some CSS is quite simple, and I'm just going to show you how to manipulate some of this just to make it look a little bit better. And then we'll go on to the little tab image. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my uh, account, and you'll notice next to widget editor, which is what we're in already, we've got CSS editor. So I'm going to click that. It just brings up a little CSS uh, box. Uh, you can validate it and save snippets as well if you want to, uh, which is worthwhile if you're going to be copying it onto separate pages. What I need to do is to know what uh, part of this is going to be controlled by the CSS uh, tags that you should know if you do CSS. A bit hard to do just looking at it so what you can do in Safari and I know in Firefox as well is you can actually bring up a code editor and if I just right click on this it allows me to inspect the element so what it does is it pops up the code editor like so I'm just going to drop it down so I can see a bit of both more and if I just zoom up so I can see the uh, text what's going to do is if I just scroll down here it eventually gets a bit, there you go, this is where you add your text. You can't do anything with a P, you can't add any code there. But what you can do is it says here, this is the rich text area, which is what it is. And this is the ID, it's good to get the ID, because you may find that if it's a class it may control other boxes. IDs are separate for individual things, so I'm just going to copy that. Okay, just close this down. Just click in here, now I've just got to start, as I would do in any uh, CSS editor, typing the data I need to control this, which is basically this. Okay, this creates your tagging structure for your CSS. Okay, it's not done anything, because I haven't uh, controlled anything yet. Mainly because of what I'm going to do quickly is to change the colour. You can possibly do the colour. Actually, no, let me try it now. Let's see if I can change the colour from here. Okay, I'm just going to make it uh, white. See if that changes. Yeah, you can control it from the CSS panel here instead of actually from uh, the actual media editor at the top. Basically anything you can do from here I guess then. So now you notice I've got to move it along. This is obviously controlling the uh, the box that's contained within. Okay, that's probably why the font thing's not working, but I'll see if I can change that later. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to give the background colour of the box. Okay, so just background... If you had a, a remote URL, you could probably put a remote URL as well. Okay. Now, you may want to use uh, RGBA which allows you to do, uh, let's just show you, RGBA, allows you to do red, green, blue and alpha channel to make it go a different colour. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it uh, white to start with, which I believe is zero, 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 and then make it one, like so, and then that's black, so I'm going to make it the opposite, which is 255, 255, 255, can never remember those. And you'll also notice it says 1, 1 is fully uh, opaque, and the other one, if you want it slightly transparent, you have to do it to degrees, so that says 0 point, say 5 is 50%, okay, we won't want it 5, so I'm going to put it, say, 3, no, even two, maybe even one. Yeah, so it's just a subtle colour. Okay, that's actually the background of your box, and you notice it's in the wrong place. Uh, we've got to give it a width as well. Okay, to give that, so you can put width, for instance. Uh, this area here is probably around about 480, so I'm going to make it less than that. So let's say you make 400 to start with. Yeah. It's a lot more than that, so I'm going to actually make it 480. We'll take it from there. Okay, don't worry about the height, it automatically changes according to the uh, texting involved in it. 
so we've just got to move it over. You can't margin it uh, centre because obviously there's this area here. So I've got to move it manually. So it's got to be margin left. Let's move it say 100 to start with. See it's not enough so we just change it until it fits. So let's say 50. Okay and from that point on we can now then judge the spacing here depending on how far away from the edge you want. I'm going to just move it a little bit more. Okay that's roughly about right actually. That just looks like a white box though stuck on top of a blue so what we can do in CSS now is to do some extra coding which allows you to change uh, the corners and have drop shadows and all this kind of uh, box shadows and everything like that so I'm going to show you how to do this because it's a tutorial I do know how to do the coding but I don't want to type it all in by hand you can actually find these little generators so what you do is you just literally say for instance change the uh, corner like that that's a bit too much I'm going to put 20 okay like so oops 20 it's not letting me change it is it there you go and what you can do is obviously select which kind of uh, coding you want and just literally copy paste that and it just literally pastes into your code box and it gives you the nicer feeling of uh, the shape of your box another generator I found earlier just to do something quickly you can also do several of these okay that does the for instance the, the font face from say Google etc etc I'm interested in doing a box shadow okay what it does there is it gives you the option to do it inside or outside which is inset or not inset and the positioning so I'm going to put these as zero because I want it to have a, a glow around the actual object and that's going to be uh, zero as well the spread I'm going to make five okay There's nothing showing at the moment basically because uh, I haven't got a color selected so as I had uh, white done before I'm just going to knock in white again just to show you how this works and as soon as I put the opacity in let's just put one in for now you'll notice it had a gl white glow around it yeah um, I don't want to have white I want to knock it down a little bit maybe but let's just see what that looks like actually inside the actual box like so you notice it's quite a hard edge. Now you want to have it uh, having a blur, okay? Which is this blur radius. So put f say five in. Like so, you notice it's got a fuzziness to it now. So I just copy paste this again. This is just showing you examples. I'm not going to keep this the way it is. Yeah, like so. Now you notice, for instance, it's too much really. The actual glow on the outside. So I've got to drop this down to say the spread for one okay maybe even zero actually I'm going to put the spread zero like so paste it and there you go that's just a nice little subtle glow you can have around your box for instance it's usually a shadow but because you're using uh, the styling to do it as a glow it obviously affects it that way okay now obviously you've got to put more text in to make it go all the way down the box but you notice it's done it to both of those okay and if you know like I said any CSS uh, styling sheet commands you can actually change all this accordingly I'm just going to save that and I'm just going to nip back and change the text a little bit so you can see what happens again so we have to go back to our widget editor like so go to where it says rich text edit right now I'm going to select that change the font family to Helvetica like I said and change the font size to 12 which I should make it a little bit bigger we didn't seem to need to do the color but for some reason I need to change those and uh, what I'm going to do is just make a paragraph this is some more text that I am adding as an example okay uh, save that 
Now what you'll notice now is if when the preview comes up it should automatically spread the box. Okay. So what you can imagine that fonts change now. Didn't change with the CSS for some reason. Okay. It hasn't done it for that one you see so I've actually changed the system there. Okay, and I've got it so it's got a border control, a paragraph control as well. You have to forgive me, I'm a little bit ill today. Okay, and obviously what you can do then obviously is to move that so it styles all the way down and uh, have the necessary text in it. Okay, so I'm just going to publish the changes. Go to Fresco, and if I just uh, update that and reload, you'll notice the text should move from the bit where we didn't want it and place it where it should be okay now the last thing I'm going to do is to show you how to control if I go back to the main window these tabs you'll notice it's got this ugly little default tab and you don't want that and you may want to have the welcome there you can't actually do anything about the position of this one but you can move it to there and I'm going to show you how to make those okay if I basically open this you'll notice one thing that happens to start with is you have a little thing appearing which is like a pencil which is the edit icon if you click on that it allows you to swap positions so I can instantly change it to there you, notice you can't do anything about that one you can move these all around when you've got multiple amounts to world or whatever order you want. Okay, so that's the first part. Second part is you want to change the icon. So if I go up here, go to my admin pa pa uh, panel, and go to manage, you notice it says edit page. This basically takes you to this options here, and you'll notice you've got a little tab that says apps. Okay. As soon as you open that, you'll notice if I go down, one of the tabs says custom tab, and you'll notice it's got the icon. If you go to edit settings for that, this appears, and it says here custom image uh, for the tab. So I'm going to click on that, and you notice it says change. Okay, what you can do is to do that. As soon as you click on this, it gives you the options here. You can upload a JPEG, GIF, or PNG, and it gives you the size. So I'm just going to do a rough temporary one uh, trying to think what I can do quickly to just have something appearing in that box so what I'm going to do is get rid of uh, all these and just literally select copy and new my image I didn't need to actually do anything about that Okay, and what I'm going to do is just crop this just for the, the the experiment. So what I'll do is I'll go to here, go to my crop thing. If you remember, it says 111 and 74. Here, let's just check it did say 74, yep. Okay, that just automatically makes this that size, regardless of how big I make this crop box. So let's just say I choose that, like so, and you'll notice it should reduce. Okay, now... I'm going to save that as a PNG through this option of save the web. Like so, save. And say, call that welcome. Now I've got several in there, so I'm going to have to make sure I call it. Freshco, welcome Freshco. Okay, that's okay. Right, so go back to here, choose file, and it should say right at the bottom, welcome Freshco, which is the tab. Choose it. Right, I'll just update and upload. Yeah, this will upload, and what you can do now is if you close that. You don't need to worry about that. It doesn't actually show, if once you press OK, it doesn't actually show it here. But as soon as you go back to your page, which says there, new page, it will have updated it. Let's just hide that. 
and you notice you've got your new tab image there. Okay, and that's basically how you do it for all the tabs and how you make your tabs and how you do some CSS coding. Okay.